All right. Hey, everybody. So I have a brunch every weekend with my dear friends on Zoom, and we talk about what's going on in our lives. You know, it's a, it's a virtual brunch where we all get together. But this past week, more than ever before, people were saying things like, I feel like I just don't have any control over my life anymore. I can't stand this one more minute. When is COVID going to be over already? If that sounds like you, I want to share with you what I came to at the end of the brunch. So hi, everybody. I'm Ricky Heller from rickyheller.com. And I help women on restricted diets learn to love their food and to stick with it for the long term so they can live their very best lives. And I think it's totally normal that we feel this way, right? Because we are in unpre I, mean, I hate to use the term because so many people are calling it unprecedented times, um, but we are in unprecedented times. This is just what's going on in our lives right now. And I'm gonna apologize. I can't see the comments while I'm talking, so I'll check for them after if there are any comments, but please do say hi and let me know you're here. Um, this has never happened in our lifetime, right? And we are just not accustomed to living this way. But what I found so interesting is that in so many ways, this is similar to the journey my clients take when they embark upon this healthy eating, restricted diet, this world of healthy eating and restricted diets. Um, because they're saying the same kind of things, right? I feel like I've lost control over my diet, just replace diet with all the things to do with COVID. I feel like I've lost control over my diet. I can't wait for this to end. When will my having to eat this way be over? I can't stand it another minute, right? And the one thing I want you to notice there, first of all, of course, it's natural because just as with COVID, your life's been turned upside down if you first are starting a restrict diet and, and it's new to you. But at the same time, what I want you to notice about the way we're responding to COVID for many of us and the, those responses to eating in a new way are that you're giving the power away to something outside of you. It's the world outside that's causing this reaction inside of you. And I think what's really important to remember is that we are in control of the way we respond to things. And to also remember that you are probably much stronger than you realize. If you think back to other times in your life when you've gone through difficulties or you've had really hard times or the worst thing that ever happened to you and that you got through and now you're here. I mean, I know I can say of all the things I've been through in my life, having to deal with COVID is really not one of the worst ones on the list. And so, in fact, I would say I had a more difficult time adapting to my new diet. So the fact that I know that and that I'm able to um, remember that I've been through hard times before, that can help to adjust right now. So if you keep that in mind with your eating habits as well, that's going to help you to see that you actually will be able to get through it. And I think um, many of the same things apply. You know, if we really look at it right now in this world of having to be um, isolated at home, not being able to get together with our friends the way we would like, having to um, be restricted in our movements and all those things, if we look at the reality of the situation and um, examine it objectively, and I'm assuming it's true if you're watching this, you have a roof over your head, you have internet, right? We have enough food to eat, we're not starving, we have clean water to drink, we will survive. <laughs> and similarly with your diet, even if you can't drink wine, even if you can't eat sugar, even if you can't have brie cheese anymore, even if you can't have your um, semolina gnocchi, whatever it is that you've had to give up, what's left is going to be food that is still going to nourish you and allow you to live and you will be fine, right? 
So I think it's really important to take a more realistic look at this and assess the situation in a way that's objective and realize this is the reality right now and this is what I have to deal with and I am able to do that, right? Whether it's giving up gluten or sugar or whatever it may be, you will be able to deal with it. And so um, focusing instead on all the things you can't have. I mean, when I, when I go to a restaurant, not recently, of course, but when I used to go to a restaurant and I would call to tell the people, you know, that I was coming and let them know that I had a restricted diet. That's one of the things I always do. Inevitably, the manager would say, okay, just tell me the things you can't have and we'll work around it, right? If they were willing to accommodate. And I would start to, if we were doing it by email, I would start to list out all the things I can't eat. And I realized I'd get back to them and say, you know, I think it would be faster if I just tell you the things I can eat, right? And that, and that made it so much easier. And then they could cook something up with that. And that's the way I live my life now with my food, right? I, in fact, unless I'm doing something like that, I don't even think about what I can't eat because I can't have it. What is the purpose in focusing on that? It's not going to make me feel better to continually mire myself in the reminders of what has been taken away from my life. But at the same time, if I focus on the foods I can eat, I can have amazing food that I absolutely love just as much as the foods I used to eat, some more. And I know they're not going to harm my body. So the first thing is to recognize the reality and be willing to accept that that is the reality. And you might not like it. It's okay if you don't like it. It's okay if you feel it's unfair, all those things. But once you've gone through those emotions about it, to actually accept this is the fact. I can't have sugar. I can't have gluten. I can't have dairy. Whatever it is for you. And so what can I have? And that really empowers you so much more and allows you to feel like you are the one in charge instead of the food controlling how you feel, right? That's the first thing. The second thing also that um, apart from which foods you can and can't have, to realize that this can open doors to something you might never have realized before. So for me, there are so many foods now that I didn't even know existed before I had to change my diet. I mean, kale? Who heard of kale before I had to eat differently? My house was a house where my mom, you know, the only thing close to green was iceberg lettuce that my dad had in a salad every night. Um, iceberg lettuce, cucumber, and tomato. That was his salad every single night. And then when I started discovering all these amazing leafy greens that I just adore, it opened up a whole new world of food that I didn't know existed before. And I could start playing with those foods and enjoying those foods. So you may just find that once you're open to it, there's a whole new variety of foods that you can have and things that you can enjoy that you were not aware of before, just by being open to it. So I think that's really, really important. And once you can do that, <clears throat> the benefit for you, of course, is that not only do you regain that sense of control and power over your own life, you're giving yourself the power instead of allowing the food to have the power, but that allows you then to live in a way that you probably weren't able to do when the food was controlling you. If you're able to really accept the food and stick with it for the long term, some of the things you're also going to lose are all of those debilitating symptoms. So if you always end up with cramping and bloating and diarrhea or acne or rashes or headaches or fatigue or anything that happens when you eat the foods that you know are not good for your body, think about going forward in life, being able to live without those things and how much more you'll be able to enjoy your life and do all the things you want to do. You're bringing back all those activities that you lost because of the old diet. So I wouldn't think of it as losing foods. I think of it as all the things I gain that are apart from food. And I still also get to really enjoy the food that I eat. So I hope that's helpful to look at it a little bit differently. And as I said, I think there are really strong parallels between how we also are reacting to COVID right now. Um, and if you are looking for more support around sticking with 
your healthy diet for the long term. I have a great free guide for you. It's called Three Simple Shifts to Stick With It Right Now. And you can grab it for free at rickyheller.com forward slash three simple shifts. It's the number three and then simple shifts. And I, that's going to give you three ways to help motivate you and keep you on track with your healthy eating going forward. All right, everybody, thank you for listening. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. I will talk to you again soon.